The examples we're going to do today will talk about the union, intersection, and complements. We'll be using Venn diagrams to illustrate how these concepts work. In the first example, we are given some information and we're going to use that information to construct the Venn diagram. Out of 40 students, 14 are taking English composition and 29 are taking chemistry. If five students are in both classes, how many students are in neither class? Build a Venn diagram that represents these students. So we would first start by drawing ourselves a rectangle which represents the universe. It's also going to contain all of the sample space and we typically use an S to represent the sample space. The number of circles inside of the Venn diagram will depend on how many events are occurring. So in this first example we have students taking English composition and students are taking chemistry. So those are actually the events. For English composition we can just choose a letter such as E to represent the English composition and then since chemistry starts with a different letter we could use C to represent chemistry. So that indicates two different events. Each circle represents an event so I'm going to place E in one circle for the English composition and C in the other to represent the chemistry class. So it would be nice if the information told us how many students are taking both English composition and chemistry because that would represent the intersection. So if we read through carefully we can see five students are in both classes. So that tells me five belongs in the intersection. Another important number is the total number of students involved. And the first sentence tells us out of 40 students. So we know that we've represented five students out of the 40. So we have more to go. Next, they're telling us that 14 students are taking the English composition class. So 14 would be the total number that needs to be represented in the event for English composition. Well, looking at the circle to represent English, we've already got five students accounted for, but we know that 14 should be the total. So if I look at the English class, I'm starting with 14, subtract 5, and that would leave me nine more students need to be accounted for. So anywhere here in the circle that's just for English, I can write nine. So nine plus five would make 14 students taking English. Then I'm going back to the narrative to see if there are any other numbers given. 29 students are taking chemistry. So looking at the event for chemistry, I can see that five students are already accounted for. So for chemistry class, 29 should be the total. Take away the five that are already in the circle and that leaves us 24 remaining. So 24 more. So we can see that 24 plus five does make a total of 29 for the chemistry students. Now the last value they give us is out of 40 students. So if I take a look at the total of 40, I already have some students accounted for. So if I take away nine students, that leaves me 31. Take away five students, that's going to leave me 26. Take away 24 students, that leaves two students that haven't been accounted for. So these two students need to go somewhere in this rectangle portion for the universe but not in one of the event circles because those two students are not in the English composition and they are not in the chemistry. They're taking some other course, we don't know what. So they do need to be accounted for. So if we add nine plus five plus 24 plus two, that will make the total of 40 students that are being described. Now that our Venn diagram is complete, we can find the union of these two events. That is, students who are taking either English composition or chemistry. In order to find this probability, we're going to go back 
and look at the total number of students taking English, and that would be 9 plus 5. And then we have another 24 students involved with chemistry. Although the total for chemistry is 5 plus 24, we've already accounted for five students who are in both the English and the chemistry courses. So essentially, we're taking 9 plus 5 plus 24. So we'll start with 9 plus 5 plus 24. And that's going to be divided by the total number of students. So if we go back to that narrative, it said there were 40 students who were taking these courses. So we're going to divide this numerator by 40. And 9 plus 5 plus 24 will give us 38. So 38 out of 40 students are taking either English composition or chemistry. So if we just do the division of 38 divided by 40, that gives us 0.95. In other words, the probability of students taking either English or chemistry is 0.95, which is the same as 95%. For our other probability, we're looking for students who are taking English composition and chemistry. So intersection means both classes at the same time. So going back to the Venn diagram, the number 5 is the intersection of the two events. So we're looking at 5 divided by the total. So we know our total number of students is 40. 5 divided by 40 is 0.125. So that's only 12.5%. So a very low number of students are enrolled in both courses at the same time. In the second example, here we have 100 people were asked if they know who the Rolling Stones and the Beatles are. So our total is going to be 100 people. We have the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. Those are the events. So I'll use R for Rolling Stones and B for Beatles since they are different letters. So we've got our rectangle set up that represents our universe and an S for the sample space. We have two circles because we have two events. One event is R for Rolling Stones and the other event is B for Beatles. We're going to build a Venn diagram that represents these people and label it. So our first bullet of information says that 15 people did not know either. So that information is telling us there are 15 people out here in the universe because those are the people that don't know either group in the events. Next, we have three people knew both. So the word both is a clue that three must be the intersection. Last, we have 40 people knew who the Rolling Stones were. So if we are talking about Rolling Stones, and that total is 40, let's subtract whatever amount has already been accounted for in that event. So we already have 3. So when we subtract 3, we end up with 37. So there must be 37 more people accounted for. 37 plus 3 will make 40 total for Rolling Stones. So what's missing? is possibly, are there any more people that know Beatles? So in order to figure out if there's any other number that needs to be placed in this event for Beatles, is add up the numbers that we have so far. So I'm going to start with 37 plus 3. That makes 40. Add the 15 that are out in the universe. And that will give us 55. And our total, remember, was 100 people. So we need to add more to 55. Since our total is 100, we'll subtract 55 from 100. And that will leave us 45. So we need 45 more in the event for knowing Beatles. So when we add 45 plus 3 plus 37 plus 15, we get the total of 100 people. And that's how we'll know that the Venn diagram is complete. When we look at the complete Venn diagram, there are other 
pieces of information that we know besides 15 people not knowing either group, 3 people know both groups, 37 is representing the people that know the Rolling Stones but don't know the Beatles, and 45 is going to represent people that know the Beatles but not the Rolling Stones. And now that our Venn diagram is complete, we can find the probability of people knowing either the Rolling Stones or the Beatles. That means we're adding 37 plus 3 plus 45. And we'll be dividing by the total number of people. And it says here there were 100 people. So we're dividing by 100. So we've got 40 plus 45, that makes 85 out of the 100, which is 0.85. You could also say that's 85%. And in our final probability, we're looking for the intersection. That means people who know the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. That would be three people. So we take three out of 100 that makes 0.03 or 3% know both the Rolling Stones and the Beatles.